Ooh, welcome back. Today we have connections. We have a running back connections. We only have two people oh. on the couch, Nicholas and James Dean. Flashback. So we often get asked, you know, how do we make the trivias? So I wanted to put a little tutorial together for you guys. What goes on behind the scenes, the making, the ideation. How we put our big brains to use to make big trivia and thus big content. And thus big views, big follower numbers, big money in JMO's pocket. You can hire him full time because of you. And this is how we make it. The first thing you have to come up with is the idea of the trivia. The ideation of the trivia can come from anywhere. It's happening in the NFL right now. Sometimes we do historical trivias. You could find it online. Maybe a tweet inspired you. There are websites that do like NFL quizzes out there that maybe we'll want to pull from there. There are obviously like game shows that we've taken from, whether it's Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy, et cetera. So it's really a matter of like whatever you want to do. We don't necessarily have guidelines. We do have meetings each week where we're like, okay, this is not working well. Let's stop doing this type of content. We also have our Discord, which if you're not in there already, it's free to join and you could drop your suggestions or trivia games that you'd like to see us play or ideas or whatever. Drop them in there. Sometimes I pull from in there. A lot of people are really passionate about this, which is cool. And they have a lot of ideas for it. That's another area to pull from. A lot of you guys ask, are we going to make a website? Yes, JL. JL, get the fuck on it. Promise we are working on that and it will be one of our very, very main priorities once right now, but also as soon as the off season hits. You guys will be able to play with us, against us, with your friends, hopefully all the above in, in due time. Okay, so just hang with us for a little while. But ideation, literally you can think of whatever you want. The hard part once you're done with ideation is finding the stats and making sure you have the correct answers. Now, we fuck up a lot. We get a lot of comments about like, this is wrong, that's wrong. It's because we have to pull all this data manually for the most part. A lot of the time, you know, once you think of an idea, the example I'm gonna use for this one is because we're in the fantasy playoffs right now, what I'm doing, list of the best fantasy performances from weeks 15 through 17 over the last five years. So basically looking back 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So we're not including this year, obviously, because we're still in week 16. The last five years, which players have put up the best three game spans from week 15 to 17, and that's it. We, we make all these on Photoshop. So you guys ask like how we make them, all these are done on Photoshop. We got a lot of layers with all the teams and the numbers and things like that. So we make every trivia on Photoshop. Now we have a bunch of templates, which we keep on our Dropbox, which you can't come into. We have a trivia templates folder. Any game that we've really ever played is in here somewhere. You have the ultimate fantasy dream, uh, fantasy team draft, luck of the draw, wavelength, deal or no deal templates, uh, bingo, tug of war. Like they're all in here. So if you have an idea for a game, they're all sitting here double cheeked up for you to just open up. So I know anytime we do like a list where we do like stats just straight up like this, I'm typically getting a template like this and kind of working off that. Being in the sports or fantasy industry for a while, I know where to pull all my stats from. So you might say like, how do you even find those numbers? I know on PFF, which we have a subscription to, you can go to their stats tool and then narrow down by sources. So 2018, weeks 15 through 17, half PPR, and then filter by fantasy points. All right, and those are the top performing guys from 2018, from weeks 15 to 17. I'll put that into an Excel sheet normally. What it looked like prior to that was each year, just basically pull the top 10 from each year, thinking that hopefully when I narrowed it down, there wasn't like one year that had 10 of the highest scoring ones, but whatever. I pulled 10 from each of the past five years, and then I'll filter it to points instead of year. And then I will take the top 32 because our template has 32 options right there. So I already know someone's going to guess Jarek McKinnon, who's number 33, and they're going to get pissed off that he's not on the list. So then from there, you kind of have to decide like, all right, how much info do I want to give them? How hard is this? I think this is relatively difficult. Like I'm going to give them the logo. A lot of times people are like, oh, that's so easy. Like, how do you not get that? The reason they're tough is because like you see a Houston logo, you're going to think of DeAndre Hopkins, but there's so many 50-50 balls where it could be like Brandon Cooks, oh, or David Johnson. You know what I mean? Like you don't really think of that. And when there's two or three really good players on a team, the reason we don't guess the really obvious names is because they're 50-50. And we're hoping that we can find one that's like 100% hit rate so we don't have to just toss a coin. And if we miss it, then we give the other person a fucking easy hit rate. You know what I mean? So we don't want to guess those ones, and that's why. With this one, I feel like it's tricky because it's a little bit 50-50. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give them all the info. They're going to get the team logo. They're going to get the number of points. And they're even going to get the year that they did it in. But I don't think it makes it super easy because really anyone can kind of, like a lot of them are really good names, obviously. But anyone can kind of pop off for a three-week 
window where like Jeff Wilson is there, San Francisco, you know, they're going to go George Kittle, Debo, Ayuk, you know, fucking any of their running backs. Jeff Wilson is going to be sitting there. You're not going to think of him. I'm going to give him as much context as possible. I think it'll just be fun anyways. This will probably be a game where rather than three strikes, so I'll give them 10 points, first to 10 points so that we can kind of like keep the content going and get the flow of, of what we're doing there. So now what I'll do, I'll write in all the points in the years in order based on the logos. I keep a folder on my desktop team logos so I could just kind of dump in there and make them anytime that I want. I'll check back in with you guys after I make this. All my bags are packed. I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. I hate to wake you up to say goodbye. And there you have it. You have the list. Luckily for them, Jarek McKinnon made it on there. I'm miscalculated. Doesn't happen often. And I'll show you POV of when we're actually playing. Trivia. Got to turn the lights on. Make sure they see what comes on the TV. Now, we've purposely set these up so that you have to be 6'5 in order to reach them. Facts. That's why no one under 6'5 can work here. With a wagon, as soon as you turn the TV on, deal or no deal pops up on the screen. Wish I could tell you we did that on purpose. <laughs> This is what the setup looks like from behind the scenes, POV. <laughs> Host, squad, hang. Like, that's what we do pregame, right? Why are you asking me? <laughs> this is what Tony looks at the whole time. He could never think of answers, so when you see his eyes avert from over here, like that way, <laughs> it's because he's staring at this fantasy board. Cards. Imagine thinking this is a picture. Put JMO in charge of SD cards. He has no idea what's going on. He doesn't, <laughs> doesn't know what those this numbers doesn't mean. Tell us. Doesn't tell him enough information. We need to put an audio card in here. We're a mess. Next step in the prosy. Plug her in. <laughs> oh yeah. There we go. Plug it into the TV. Turn around and shake it. Throw that ass in a circle. Do I have a tail? Yeah. And then depending on whether or not, because we make them in Photoshop, so sometimes the answers are in the layers here. So we gotta throw a blanket up on the right side of the screen because this if, just directly shows us. If anyone wants to donate any blanket that's just somewhat prettier and cleaner and better. Why? We're open. We don't need a pretty blanket Maybe for this. Maybe like a BDG. If anything, I feel like it's just like, it's hard work, hard work. Hard work. <laughs> <laughs> so he has layers in there, etc. cetera. JMO hit the remote. So then you see exactly what we see. So then when we edit, we'll just cut the board out like that and that will go up on the screen for y'all. Clinton Portis spelled wrong. Recording. Uh, My check, 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 check. My check. Ooh, welcome back. Today we have connections. We have a running back connections. We only have two people uh, on the couch, Nicholas and Jameis Dean. End of flashback. Don't mind if I have a good week. It's Tuesday, December 18th, 19th, I think. Ain't no way this fucking watch works. 6.20 it says. I think it might be like 4.35. I can't tell anymore. Literally, it gets dark at fucking like 3.52. So it could be 3.54 right now. It could be 7.54. Who knows? Who knows anything anymore in this economy? All right, I'm not sitting down because I've been sitting all day and I just, I don't know. I don't want to sit anymore. I just want to stand and walk in circles. All right, Tony's out of town. He left Monday and then Gut leaves tonight to have a brand new hip forever so he can avoid arthritis. Like, that's a big deal. Like, bro, just deal with it. Like, it's arthritis. Like, you'll be fine. First world problems. All right, this is my second time doing this because I just did it with the camera not recording, so we're lit. Fucking mint. Anyone remember that? I do. Um, next. Have surgery tomorrow. Gonna be filming the entire thing. You can cut to it, but I'm high as fuck. I've officially arrived at the hospital. Surgery fit, dripped out. Where's my purse? I don't know where your purse is. We'll get back at it post-op. I guess pregame thoughts. Am I nervous? No. Have I done this before? Yes. Am I worried about it? No. It's gonna be a long recovery. I'm getting my last steps in, my last jumps, last runs. About to do fucking 40 for the bitch. Yeah, but we'll see you after. Peace. We made it home. Crutches, whatever. Turned out better than I expected. I'm high as fuck, dude, and you can see it. But yeah, you know, we out here. It's better than it, I thought it was gonna be. I'm not in as much pain, and they didn't have to do as much, so I should be good to go going forward. But yeah, we live. 
go. I was like, yeah, I can still take it. I'm like, oh, you're going undergoing like, we'll take the video for, we'll take the edit for you Thursday night, buddy. Like we got it, don't worry. You know, he wants to play through, he wants to fight through, which I appreciate, but everyone go wish gut well in the comments, obviously. So he'll be mobile for a while. By the time he's back, they'll have moved into New Jersey. We'll have the new office space, which is cool as fuck. The apartment has still not fucking got back to me about moving in. At this point, I don't even know if I have an apartment because they just won't fucking answer their emails or text messages, nothing. Your business model is to take money from people and then you let them live there because of that money. I am trying to give you my money. Please just let me live there. I'm trying to get out of the office. We filmed a bunch of trivia today. I was in deal or no deal. That's gas. I'm gonna win shoes. Cause I got the combo of DK Metcalf and Tua Tunga Bailoa. Ah! So if you didn't see that video, go check it out. Cause you're about to see me fucking win the fucking bread. Christmas is coming up. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. I did finally get my girlfriend a gift for Christmas. I got my mom a gift for Christmas. I don't have anything for my dad yet. I don't have anything for the guys in the office yet. Gut's already been like, I got Nick this, I got Tony that, I got you this. And I'm like, yeah, your guys is is coming. I'm like, ugh. Ugh. I've talked about it in the last vlog. The like, item I wanted to get the guys is out of stock. I'd rather get them a gift that matters even if it's late than just some bullshit. Obviously, I can't tell you guys what that gift is, unfortunately, not because I am like want to be mysterious, but it's because they'll watch this and then it'll be a spoiled surprise. Hopefully filled with joy, whatever the fuck. If you don't celebrate Christmas, whatever the hell you celebrate, have a good one. Enjoy your time. How you doing? Make sure to tell us, because I like scrolling through the comments, New Year's resolutions in the comments below. Just had a nice long sit down with, with Gut, just a quick one-on-one, -on -one, you know, talking about the future of him staying here, his role, how he can help the company, et cetera, or like coming into his own. Cause he's starting to get a little bit of a traction on Twitter, TikTok, et cetera. Starting to try to make it as a content creator by himself, which I love. Like I encourage the shit out of that. And I want everybody within the company to build up their own style and audience and, and personal brand and have their own unique perspective to offer. Everyone has their own passion, so I want them to feel open. I want them to feel good expressing themselves within those paths. That's ultimately like what we're trying to build here, a safe space for people to be able to use content as like their outlet. We just talk a lot about how you're supposed to be feeling as a content creator at that stage as you're starting to get your foot in the door a little bit, because it could feel extremely fucking overwhelming, especially coming into a place like this where you really have like an established platform and an audience, if it's your first time really making content, the audience lets you know how they feel about you immediately. You guys who watch this on YouTube, you guys are like the fucking best. You guys are positive. You guys love us and we love you in return, reciprocated. We feel like we could do no wrong in your eyes, which is kind of electric, it's kind of awesome. You guys love everything that we do, which we do not take for granted, but like not every audience is like that. Like the TikTok audience is ruthless. They're fucking assholes, they're mean. You know, and that could be a lot for people. I've been doing social for like 10 fucking years now, it feels like probably actually is it doesn't feel like that it is that so I have very thick skin for the most part you know if you're a newer creator and you're exposed to thousands of people fucking chirping at you it can be overwhelming that was part of our conversation he just needs to know that like it's okay to feel really lost at first and not sure of what you're doing it's really important when you're starting to like start to set up a good foundation for what you want to do long term not doing corny stuff online not doing things that are not you, right? Because that's how you put yourself in a box. It's how you set yourself up for failure long-term. Even finding success upon things that are not who you are are gonna lead you down a bad path eventually. So just talking through some of those things with him that I think like a lot of beginner creators can make the mistake of or having a bad mindset towards. So that was good to, you know, kind of have that chat with him. Uh, other things that are happening. On the down low, me and JL have been having secret meetings, secret as in right in front of everyone's face, about how to perfect the trivia to the nth degree. What new game should we add? What games should we remove? How should we improve the games that are working? How can we make the games that suck better so that they are worthy of keeping and we don't have to remove them? How do we change the thumbnails? How do we change the titles? How do we change the production? How do we change the rules of the game? Yada, 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 yada. How do we make more money from the games? Yada, 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 bullshit. We've been deep diving the analytics on that. Point is, we're trying to get one of these for the trivia channel. We have one of those for the fantasy channel. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. We want one for the trivia channel as well. That's kind of my goal here. I've never really like said that out loud. These are things I try to stay conscious of with all these guys, because there's a lot of moving parts in here, of course. Like everyone's playing a part and doing work for the company BDG, but everyone also has their own personal lives and personal content and personal goals and stuff that they're trying to strive for. And I don't think that's always the case in more corporate settings or real jobs or whatnot. If you're like in an accounting firm, the boss doesn't give a fuck about your content 
content on the side or whatever, where I, I genuinely do. Like I want everybody in here again to succeed. I want everyone else to build in leverage, build up leverage, man. I've talked about this, you know, for a long time ad nauseum, that I want people that come to me that work you know, with me, for me, whatever. When the day comes, they've built up enough leverage that they're like, this is, you know, what I have done. This is what I can do. This is what I'm worth. And I have no choice but to like meet them there halfway. Perfect example is JMO last week, gonna be part of BDG long-term now because he's built up a lot of leverage by himself and he was able to negotiate a contract that he felt really, really strong about. And so did I. I'm like ecstatic to have him on the team because I know what he brings to the table. And I want everybody in our company to be able to bring that same fucking energy and that same leverage. Because if you have leverage, it means you've done something extraordinary and that means you could bring that same energy to our company. Having leverage doesn't mean leverage over me in a bad way. It means you have leverage over the audience. You've built something up well, you've built something up to a point of having fucking leverage, you know? So I wanna help them succeed because it also in turn just helps us to succeed overall as a company. To be honest, this sounds like cocky and shitty and that's not my intent at all, but we're gonna get that. Like the trivia channel is at 30,000 subscribers in less than like eight months, we're gonna get to 100 eventually, so it's kind of low hanging fruit, and it seems kind of cocky to say that's like easily gonna happen, but we will get there. That's still a milestone that I'm very excited to strive for, reach for, and eventually accomplish. The big one though, can we ever hit a mil? That's a big goal. Can we hit a million subscribers? That's like a whole nother level. Kids got a dream. Trivia channel, we are coming for a million subscribers. We're a long ways away. One day at a time, you can accomplish a lot, and eventually, the snowball effect will happen, shit will add up, and five years from now when I'm making a different vlog, it's 2023, December 19th, maybe 2028, December 19th, will be a hell of a lot closer to a million subscribers. We might be there by then, who knows, we'll see, yada, 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 I'm out, hang. We are looking to bring on a dynasty creator as well, because we want to launch a dynasty focused YouTube channel where our fantasy channel right now, decent amount of subs, I think we're at like close to 120, maybe 117 or something right now, but we wanna branch out and do a dynasty only channel. The more we grow, the more I realize that I wanna niche down and like everything that we do should have its own brand, its own like company, its own arm of the business where they're not all intertwined. And I think you see a lot more success that way by splitting things up. Piece of advice, if you have a lot of different passions or ideas or subjects that you want to talk about or go after or make content about, I think they should be split up. Different channels, I think you should choose one and go after it wholeheartedly. But if you want to do multiple, set them up from the start as different things. But anyways, that's what we're looking for. So going through different candidates, been doing research on people on YouTube, on TikTok, on Twitter, etc. Been talking a lot about that with JL, looking through the right candidates. They have to be New York City enabled. They don't have to be based obviously, but they gotta be in here because that's one of the strong points of what we're gonna be doing in the future is making sure that all of the creators that we bring on long-term will need to be in-house to make content because that's the energy and the brand that I wanna create here. I don't wanna do shitty Zoom calls, plain white backgrounds. Like I wanna make videos, you know what I'm saying? Like I wanna produce videos and make them good. I wanna make them good. I wanna be good, I wanna be fucking great, hang. All right, I'm tired, I'm tired, bro. I need to eat like a vegetable or some shit. I haven't had a vegetable in about a week. If you say you're going to the gym, you're fucking wrong. Don't put that because you should be going to the gym already. Like you should be in there right now. So don't say I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm gonna like just don't. Just go now. Go today. Start today. Don't wait till the new year. Go December 26th, seventh, fifth, foot, whatever the fuck. Go to the gym. Don't wait till the new year. Get it fucking done. Dial the fuck in. Dial the fuck in. Okay. So everything but going to the gym in the comments below. You know I know Nick is gonna be the call to one more. He should comment that down below or Joe will for him. What else? You know, moving to the new apartment soon. Excited about that, excited to just finally fucking get there. Even when I'm on crutches, I won't be on our socials for a bit because I'm gonna be on crutches, gonna be dead, gonna be dead to the world. Pretty lit, that's about all I got. So kiss me and smile for me. Tell me that you wait for me. Hold me like you never let me go. Cause I'm leaving home. Jet plane, don't know when I'll be back again. Oh, babe, I hate to go. Enough of this, no Christmas. Stuff. I was waiting for you to mention it. <laughs> like, zero Christmas spirit. Dude, like, over the age of fucking 15, who cares about Christmas? Fuck. It's time to grow up. Think Alex Ramosi cares about Christmas? Not a fucking chance. <laughs> Tell me what's good about Christmas. Giving, gifts, spirit, music.
happiness. Okay, those are all things. lights. Those are all things that happen every day. Christmas spirit lights. cannot Music. be measured. That is an intangible value. Christmas spirit is just something in the air. It smells in the air here <laughs> all the time. It's it's the expo. <laughs> We're gonna bring on a creator specifically makes dynasty fantasy content. Me and JL have kind of been narrowing down a list of people that we've looked for, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, whatever, we've kind of been searching. Found one kid that I like, his name's Andrew. He'll be in the office probably within a half hour or so. Interview him, get to know him a little better. What? Interrogate. Yeah, Jamo's gonna lead the interview. <laughs> Take on more responsibility now that he's full time. I'm just gonna stand there like this while Jamo asks the questions. And then we're gonna launch Dynasty Channel. And this is what we're looking for creators for to bring in. So Andrew will be one of the candidates. We're not looking to bring on anyone full time right now. There's obviously room to expand here. Realistically, I'm trying to expand the content without putting too much more on my plate, but at the same time, making sure that we have like high quality people. Andrew's gonna come in, Jamo's gonna interrogate him, so hopefully by the end of the day, we will have a good candidate that can come in and- I think a perfect softball question is asking if he saw Gogeta and see his thoughts, if he did. He okay. says it was like the best movie of the year. So if he says, no, I didn't see it, perfect. <laughs> okay, so that's where we're at right now. All right, lab coats on three, lab coats on three. One, two, three. Lab coats. Love that. Hello friends and enemies, I am reporting to you live from the BDG headquarters with groundbreaking news. Teleprompter stopped working. Forgot what the news was. What do we got? It's Friday. Friday. It's Saturday, Sunday, what? Evening. Hit me with that Darnell docket. Hang. I want to talk about that. Something that went super under the radar. So JMO used to like DM me on Instagram before I knew who he was and before we were like working together at any point. He would just like send me random shit about football or like different like prize picks plays that he liked and explained to me why and i'm like man this kid just be fucking yapping in my dms right now he sent me some of his youtube work that he did early on in college and jmo used to have flow i'm talking about like river what's the what's the river in that nigerian the nigerian river is that right the nile river that's for sure what i meant yeah it should be flowing like the nile river <laughs> it was like down to here it was crazy. And you think of JMO, you know, he had a shaved head and no one really knew that JMO looked like that. But I remember him sending me a video at first and I was like, who is this psycho? He looked like Tarzan kind of. I never really like brought it up again, I don't think. Unless I've said it to JMO like all the time, but no one in the office really knew about it. So yesterday we resurfaced some of his old YouTube stuff. And I'm not proud of what I used to look like when I started my YouTube either. But JMO's hair is, it, was, it makes you think twice about who he is, about like, you know, if he has a second life on the other side of things you know we just started sending pictures around i think we're going to start using that as like his template photo from now on because it's who he is and i think we should all boycott all of jmo content until he grows his hair out to that length again because he just looked like a fucking animal it was sick he looked really cool or actually when i was watching the vlog this week that my confession last week was the exact thing i said in this video's confession like it's going to be verbatim like i talk about the apartment outside of like the alien and ghost and godzilla talk I complained about the apartment again, talked about not getting enough Christmas gifts again. It's like kind of embarrassing how I realized my life had zero change from week to week. I just ranted about the same stuff. But going off of that, I did finally, finally get the keys to the apartment. All right, after seven years, eight months, 94 days, three weeks, seven minutes, 83 seconds, me and Gut have officially got into the pool. Gut's in surgery right now. I've officially got into the apartment. I have a key, I have a kitchen, I have a place to live, nowhere to sleep yet. I will be ordering a mattress very, very soon. I have sunlight, that is number one priority. And I'm going to Philly this weekend for Christmas cause gotta get gifts from Santa Claus. But when I get back, I think last night might've officially been my last night in the office and I didn't even, I didn't even appreciate it enough. Maybe I just couldn't have wished it to gone by faster, but I think I've officially possibly potentially spent my last sweet dreams in the office we'll see when i get back from philly if my mattress is delivered in the apartment but done done six months deep into the bdg office and i might be officially out this might be jamo's last day staying in the office which is cool he got the apartment keys but i think he still has to order a bed so right now he literally just has like four walls at his apartment he could sleep on the floor with nothing else so don't want him to do that gut is out of surgery he's doing okay he's living he's fine his hips are intact he can shake that ass the dump truck is good to go 
Gut is done with surgery. He'll be officially moving in the six. I will be in Florida during the six and I have his keys. So I guess I'll leave him here. I guess I'll leave him with Nick. I'll leave him with Joe. I'll leave him somewhere. I'll put him under the mat. I don't know, but Gut can't get in the apartment unless I remember to leave those keys and they're on my keychain. So I'm kind of scared I'll just forget them, take them with me to Florida and then Gut Gut now has to sleep in the office and he can't go anywhere. We just had Andrew, who we are kind of like interviewing for a Dynasty content creator spot. You spend so much time researching. I used to do podcasts for our league, like our home league, just mm -hmm. for fucking fun. Like, that's how that's how pretty much I started, I feel like. And they're like, dude, you spent so much time doing this for us. You need to just do it for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'd heard him for years, and I was like, ah, it, you know, it's a big time commitment that I don't know if I want to commit to yet. Then I was like, fuck it, I'm moving out to Jersey. I don't have any friends out there. I'm working from home. I'm remote. So I decided to do that. That's what I ended up doing. And so that's kind of the whole rundown of how I got here. Now I'm sitting here in the chair. BDGE office. How much time you, you say you spend probably like 30 hours making content for yourself? If you ask my wife, she'd tell you I'm sitting at that desk for the time hours. I wake up yeah. to the time I go to sleep. Good. That's how it should be, honestly. Yeah. Do you have like a cadence to the content that you make? You're like, I got a new week, like I'm going to put out, make videos as you kind of feel like making them, or do you have a fixed schedule? No, I I mean, the in season it was daily. It was every single day I had to have a video out. In the off season, really all dynasty focused, three to four videos a week. Like I'm trying to keep it Monday, Wednesday, Friday when I first started. And now that I'm going back into the off season, it's going to go back to more dynasty focus. I incorporated a little bit more redraft stuff during the season because I feel like tap into that audience and bring some of that over to the channel too. I mean, I just wrote out all of my videos for the whole month of January. So like I know what day I'm recording that video. I know when it's coming out, all that stuff. So it's all planned. You know, I just brought him in to kind of get to know him as a person a little bit more, see what drives him, see what his ultimate goals are for the most part. It doesn't matter what equipment I have, how high quality it is. I'm always gonna be like, fuck, dude, I can do this a little bit better. I can yeah. make this a little bit better. Never gonna be good enough in my opinions. And maybe to a fault at times. I just can't satisfy myself with this shit. Well, it shows in a good way. You'll never get it. You'll never hit satisfaction. I know. What I've learned. But that's good. There's no number that satisfies you, yeah. that's why. It's that Kobe shit, man. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's toxic. It's bad. It is it's toxic. actually bad. It is bad. Almost irrationally believe I have the next big thing here. Good. It's just getting people to buy into it. I firmly believe that, and I've said that to people, and people are like, okay, bro, like, all right, man. And I'm like, no, like, I'm telling you, I'm sitting on a fucking gold mine of shit. It is going to be the next fucking thing. I love it. It's just when. It's just, just keep my head down, put in the work. Eventually that shit will be there. It's gonna happen. And people are gonna act surprised when that shit happens. You shouldn't have been surprised because I told your ass in 2019 <laughs> that that shit was gonna happen. Was so, straight, that was straight up me 10 yeah, years ago. Yeah. That's how I believe. It fucking pisses me off. Like, <laughs> like, I'm getting mad right now just sitting here thinking about Hell it. Yeah, go off. Like, damn. Go dude, off. Like, and these motherfuckers, bro. You heard it here. It's on camera. It's <laughs> documented. I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. And now that it's on, it's on camera too, now I really gotta back that shit. Mm -hmm. So like I'm, uh, it just feels that way. Good. All right. Yeah. I'll fuck with it. <laughs> I think the interview went really well because when I'm looking at bringing people on, I want to make sure that I could both extract value, but give them value at the same time. You know, not everybody that comes in here, I look at as someone that needs to be a necessary building block for BDG or be someone that's going to be here long term. Obviously, you want those people and that's a great quality to have someone like JMO, right, like came in had his own audience might have wanted to go out on his own after this and continue to just like take what he learned here and build his own thing. Uh, but instead he wanted to be part of this and, and grow this. So the full-time offer that we gave him was something that showed that we wanted him to be more involved in like the business side of things, long-term vision. Today, Andrew came by, who is a potential dynasty member of BDG, maybe part of 2024 BDG easier. Maybe that'll be a part of Andrew's year as well. We took him through an informal interview, which means Nick gave him an interview and I just sat there and stared at him and listened to his stories. I didn't really do much. I just shadowed the situation, but it was still cool to be a part of. You a movie guy? Am I a movie guy? Yeah. You watch the new Godzilla Minus One? No. Good. Okay. Save your money. Don't. <laughs> All right. Save, Save your money. money. You got a favorite superhero? I'm off. Favorite <laughs> superhero? This matters. Okay, well, this is going to definitely fuck up my shots at this at all. If you answer this at all, yeah, it will. I don't like superheroes at all. You're hired. You're literally, like, you're a CEO. There's got to be one where you're like, he's got cool, okay, if you could have any superpower, like fly or something. I'm going to stop asking bullshit ass questions. He was a very cool dude. Hope to see him more. He needs to kind of step up in trivia. Like, I know that's not why we're bringing him onto the team, but that should be like a skill set you just have and ready to use at any time. Andrew needs to step up in that category. It's like one of the first questions I typically ask. It's not like the cliche, like, what are your goals kind of thing, but really trying to dive deep into 
okay, you know, you've been making content for a little while. Like, where do you see yourself going with the content? Do you ultimately want to just have live in a world where you are financially free and you just make fantasy content every day? Some people look at that as a dream. Like me, I, that's kind of how I looked at things when I first started making content. And now I'm like addicted to building the business here and the brand and the marketing and all that stuff behind it. And that's what drives me. So if I ever drop that, like, I don't think I'd want to just be making videos. I like all the exterior that comes with it. So I'm trying to figure out everybody that comes in here, what level of the spectrum that they fall on and how do I help them get to whatever their goal is? So it was a lot of back and forth that way, but the energy was really good. Andrew's really passionate, really liked what I saw and heard from him. So I think he will probably be more involved in the dynasty side of things going forward, but we still have a lot of loose ends to kind of tie up with content creators, editing, schedule, all that kind of stuff. So if any of you guys play Dynasty Fantasy Football, we will be launching specific YouTube channel just for that stuff. Some of you guys probably subscribe to the main BDGE Fantasy channel. That will be more season long and redraft focused going forward. And we will have the Dynasty only channel. Don't worry, the trivia channel will stay intact. We did play a brand new game today called Naming Dudes. I just showed random NFL players from like 2013, 2015, 1984, whatever. Today we're just gonna sit here and name some dude. You're going to draw a card. That card determines what player it pops up. If you can name that player, you get one point. First of 10 points wins. It's just a picture of the player? Yep, pretty oh, simple. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> All right. Draw a card, Nick. If there's jokers, if I didn't account for that, I'd get rid of them. Block it. King of Spades. King of Spades. There's a chance I made this a while ago, so I might not know these players, but here's your first one. This is a good one. It's my go. It's my go, Algie Crumpler. <laughs> it's my fucking go. Crumpler. It's Crump God. It's one point for Nick. Hang. And we just naming dudes. That was a fun new game we played. I don't know if it'll ever be back, but new kid is on the block. We tested his trivia skills. We got more trivia coming. That'll be, that's a big part of 2024. It's not just BDG's year. It is BDGE's trivia year. 2024 is where trivia is going to hit the next level. And we didn't really talk about like goals for 2024 because I think around the office, we don't believe in the whole New Year's resolution. We're just kind of like, fuck your resolution, be better tomorrow, not next year just because of the date. But still, we should set a goal. And I don't think it's crazy to say we aim for like a silver plaque for BDG by 2025. We're at 30,000 subscribers in only a few months. Off season's when we grow the most. I'll, I'll go ahead and stamp it. I'll go ahead and label it. Let's try and chase it that 100,000 subs within 2024 to 2025. Two weeks from the moment I'm sitting in this chair, we will also be in the brand new office. So a transition is happening in the new year. It's not just a new year, new resolution. No, it's like new year, new BDG, new us. I will be officially under contract. I will be officially out of the office. We will be officially in the new office. 2024 is our year. No one's saying it. Every year at the end of the year, everyone's like, this year's my year. This year's my year. I haven't heard it at all this year. So I'm going to plant the flag and claim 2024 is BDG's year to be the best. Whatever X amount of years it's been around, 7, 8, 9, 20 more to go. I'll end it there. But we need to get your guys' feedback as always going into the off season. What do you want to see more of? Because we could probably ramp up because we've got a little more time left over for us to work on trivia, whether it's more long form. Do you like specific games that take up 30, 40 minutes of a YouTube? Or do you like us chopping it up into you know, four different trivias that span over a 30 minute clip. Just, just let us know. You tell us, you talk nice to us and we'll yap nice back at you. So that's it. I hope all you guys enjoyed your Christmas. I think by this time we'll be heading into new year's weekend. You guys have already have had Christmas. You'll know if you're in your fantasy championships, et cetera, et cetera. 